Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and in a world where there, and certainly in a country where there's an imbalance of rights between workers and employers and especially in the United Kingdom where even the few rights of the workers are not defended by our government, unions are a vital bulwark against the oppression of those workers. And given that those workers, the workers we're talking about make up the vast majority of society, we're talking about coordinated groups that protect society itself from oppression by those who are supposed to have our interests at heart. So it's particularly tragic to someone like me who supports the work of unions when a union goes bad, and I mean really bad, and not only influences politics to pursue policies that actually harm their own members. So you live in a society where the government is not looking after you as a worker, but then your own union is not looking after your interests as a worker either. But worse than that, when they're corruptly trying to shut down anyone who would try to stand up for those workers. So in this video, I'd like to talk about how the Unite Union, which is the largest union in the UK, has pissed away two million pounds of their members' money on a witch hunt against a Labour MP that failed, although succeeded in harming the Labour Party, and yet they're still unapologetic. But first, if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the union in question, as I say, Unite, Britain's largest union and headed up by the insidious Len McCluskey. Uh, this is the man who forced Labour to go into the general election without backing Remain. He alone did that. He alone did that. Um, and, he, and he could do this because unions in the Labour Party have block votes on party matters. They can essentially overrule actual Labour supporters. Now, union bosses themselves are elected by union members. Of course, that's how it works everywhere. And those union members are not necessarily Labour supporters. They don't necessarily, they could easily support the Conservatives. So as such, although I think the unions should always, they always have been, they always should be at the heart of the Labour Party but heading up committees that, that advise on policy. They shouldn't actually get a vote on any of them because if members of a union are Labour supporters, they can join the party as Labour members. We can't have a situation where a man who might have been elected mostly by union members opposed to Labour actually gets to decide Labour policy. But having the ridiculous situation where a large union has actually destroyed British industry and the jobs that go with it, that's a general bugbear that pisses me off every time I have to think about it. But they have committed a more specific sin for the purpose of this video. So a few years ago, quite soon after the Brexit referendum, I think, Anna Turley, who's one of the Labour MPs who lost her seat, it wasn't this time around before, thanks to the incompetent and divisive leadership of Labour, partly you know, um, down to Lynn McCluskey as well. She called him an arsehole. <laughs> he is, he is an arsehole. But she called him an arsehole. Now, water off a duck's back to any balanced person. I, I cannot tell you on a daily basis what I get called. It's a lot worse than that. Doesn't matter, who cares? But Len McCluskey cared because, of course, he's not a balanced person, he's a narcissist, and he acted in exactly the same way as you'd expect any narcissist to react. He opted for vengeance. So a news site that tried to claim that it was independent, though it wasn't, of course, made allegations against Turley of uh, falsifying a declaration on Unite site. She was on the, she was saying she was posting the part where you're supposed to go if you're unwaged um, to save herself some money. And, you know, um, she was attacked as, as being the worst sort of person, calling her all the names that rouse the hard left in the same way as anyone who criticised Corbyn. She got exactly the same treatment. And, um, yeah, I mean, exactly the same treatment as you would get for any of these, this clique of narcissistic egomaniacs, really. And once they'd painted her as a red Tory, that's one of the terms they use, a right-wing fifth columnist, they then moved to suggesting that she was conspiring to get lots of right-wing people to join the union in order to uh, vote for a different union general, uh, secretary general, um, or union boss, I forget what the actual term is in Unite, and, and infiltrate, therefore, Labour Party policy. So they're really getting, you know, the fear against her, really uh, blackening her name. And the site, whose editor was one Stephen Walker, 
claimed that he had lots of detailed information on this conspiracy, but he could only release her name. He couldn't release any other names because all the oh, legal things. Now, I won't bore you with the details of exactly what they did with the timetable, but if you've ever seen the treatment people get on the left, if they don't consider the likes of McCluskey and Corbyn as princes of Earth, then you'll get the idea. Um, if not, their methodology invariably paints you as a right-wing infiltrator and uh, someone who goes around biting the heads off babies. Um, that's the sort of thing there. So Anna Turley, who is not a spiteful little goblin, she asked this new site, Squawk Box, for an apology. She says, you seem to be writing libelous things about me. I think you should apologise. That was it. They'd libelled her, apologise for it, we'll call it a day. They did not. I would also want you to bear this in mind, if you're a Labour supporter like me. They were doing this during the 2017 general election campaign. They were deliberately attacking a Labour candidate, smearing her name, putting her in a position where she was very likely to lose her seat if people believed these things, during a general election campaign where a lot of people were rather hoping Labour might form a government. And that was it. It was, it was to destroy her. This action was to destroy her and to hell with the cost to the party. And it did cost. It cost Turley her seat because people did believe it. And it cost Labour the seat. Now, this event alone, without knowing whether the allegations were true or not at the time, I, I mean, I'm only doing this now because the court case has just announced its verdict. So I couldn't know at the time uh, myself. But that event was enough without me knowing whether the allegations were true or not, to convince me that at the time that McCluskey will never put the Labour Party ahead of his personal pride. If he really had a beef or if they really had this information, then they should have waited till after the general election. They did not. They did it when it would do the most damage to Labour. Um, and, and, you know, when you think about the last general election, there were Labour candidates standing at the last general election a couple of weeks ago, who I knew to be betraying the Labour cause, exemplified by the fact that some of them have been returned as Labour MPs and last week voted on Boris Johnson's proposals to abolish worker rights. How a Labour MP can ever do that is beyond me. But it comes down to this. They're not really Labour if they do that. And I'm not in getting into this, oh, if you don't believe this, you, you can't really be Labour. But uh, if you're going to vote on something that is there to abolish workers' rights, how can you be? And yet, and I knew that these people would do that, and yet I still wanted them to win because a bad Labour MP would still at least have opposed Boris Johnson being Prime Minister. They would still oppose the Conservatives forming a government. So that would make them better than a bad Conservative MP or even a good Conservative MP, come to that. But McClus McCluskey doesn't care who's in government. He only cares about his personal influence. He would rather, and that's the problem with a number of the people at the top of Labour now, he would rather control Labour in opposition than simply be an advisor to a Labour government whose, whose advice might be ignored. He can't have that. His ego cannot take it. But the allegations were not true, not even close. This has now been determined in court. Stephen Walker, who claimed that his news site was independent, well, he's had to reveal that he's having money paid to him by the Unite Union. And if you're a worker who is a member of Unite, that means that Unite are using your subscription money, which should be spent on legal bills for your fellow members and for you when you need it, on a man who was libeling a Labour MP, had cost Labour a seat in the 2017 election and was shilling for Len McCluskey. Then you consider that because the allegations were not true, so evidently not true that the judge has said there are no grounds to appeal the verdict, you also have to wonder how this supposedly independent news site got hold of such a story and then published it. They, they must have been convinced enough to publish it. And there's only one explanation, and that is that Unite members' money wasn't just being spent on his legal bills, but the news site in general and has been for a few years. Uh, workers who depend on their union to look after their interests are spending that money on a propaganda department and not even pushing propaganda that's in the interests of their members, but on delivering two conservative governments and working on their third. And this is particularly egregious because this sort of behaviour will turn sensible people off unions. Boris Johnson is wanting to push through legislation that will severely curtail the activities of unions. Behaviour like this makes it very easy for him to justify it. I mean, I wouldn't join the Unite Union. I would not join them. And if I worked in a place 
where no other union was recognised, I would be vulnerable. I mean, if you're, you're vulnerable, I think, even if you are a member, because they're not spending their time or their money on your interests. Not at all. And it's not just, you know, that false libelous allegations were made against an innocent and hardworking MP. They did so with a brutality that even the judge had to remark on. And because they refused to back down, when it could have cost them nothing, when I say them, I mean you, if you're a Unite member, that is, or your friends, if you're not, but they are, um, it could have cost them nothing. But because they persisted in this savage attack, and remember, this is something that happened a few years ago, more than three years ago. This is the problem with how long these cases take. Uh, and you think about the anguish that, the, the, you know, Anatolia will have been put through during all this. You know, because they persisted with it, Unite members are now two million quid poorer. That's two million quid less in the coffers. And they're still not backing down. Unite are still not backing down. So that money could yet rise quite a lot you know, they keep at this like a dog who thinks it's got a bone and it's going to cost Unite members much, much more money. And, and, and this is what is currently controlling the Labour Party. It's not just a case that you've got the same people who incompetently lost two general elections, but want to be the ones to put it right next time, despite not once admitting to any mistakes on their part. That would be bad enough. But there is an actual wickedness, evil almost, in control of the party here. And it will not be easy to expunge even with a good leader. But without a good leader, there is no chance. I mean, I was saying to my girlfriend just this morning that it's only the last two general elections where on general election day I thought we're going to lose this. Um, in every other general election previously, some of which Labour won, some of which Labour lost. But I always had that hope. I was waiting for the results. Labour could win this. And, and I never had that hope in the last two general elections. But that was only really when we were getting towards the general election campaign. Like, several years before then, I didn't give up hope. Even when we lost in 2017, I didn't give up hope for the next one. And I knew that the next one was going to be in less than five years' time, because it was a hung parliament, of course it's going to be. Um, but I, you know, and I knew Corbyn wasn't going anywhere, but I still had... Because things can change. Things could change. Um, they didn't, uh, and as it got close to that. But now I'm in a position where I'm thinking the general election, the next general election is going to be in four or five years' time. And if it goes very badly as for us, four years' time. Um, and if they don't get the right leader, I will just be instantly saying, right, we've got no chance. Even though lots of things could change in the next few years, if we don't get rid of these people. Because, you know, Len McCluskey, you know, and, and his cronies, his cronies, we don't know what is going to change in the next few years, but one thing we do know, one thing we know cannot possibly happen, is that the likes of McCluskey can ever decide policies that would allow the British public to give Labour power. We know that for certain. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.